Bible, if you would, to turn to Genesis chapter 2 with me. Genesis chapter 2. Continuing our look at a manhood and womanhood in the scripture. Uh, tonight we're uh, going to begin to look at the uh, ways that uh, that masculinity and femininity work within the household. Uh, and we'll begin uh, towards the end of the night uh, looking at some ways in which uh, God's design in that can be sinned against in the scripture. And so if you have your Bibles in Genesis 2, in verse 23, we're looking at the function of child rearing in the scripture. The scripture says, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Uh, This is one of the, the purposes for Uh, the dichotomous nature of mankind, the two-sided nature of mankind, men and women, is the production of children. For this cause a man shall leave father and mother, cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. That is, uh, in a spiritual and functional sense, they shall be one uh, being to act as one unit in the world, but also that they should produce children uh, as as God uh, blessed them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Uh, turn to Ephesians chapter 6 with me. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. The scripture says, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Uh, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, with promise, that it may be well with thee, and uh, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Uh, The... uh, Uh, children uh, are told to honor their father and mother, to obey their parents in the Lord. The the, the parents are to lead the children, and as the the parents lead the children, they are to follow them. And the the purpose of this is so that they may live a long time on the earth. They can, uh, they will have the wisdom imparted to them by their parents, so they won't die. Of course, we know uh, some of the very first things that you teach to children. Uh, You you don't play in the street. You stay close to your parents. You don't go near strangers. These uh, common wisdoms uh, that are taught to children are for the purpose of keeping them alive on the earth. Uh, Parents serve that function to, to raise them up. Uh, And that last passage says, Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, uh, to to raise them in a certain way. Uh, Proverbs 23, verse 22, also says that children ought to, of course, uh, obey their parents. The proverb says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Uh, Even the job of of parenting and being the the parents of someone doesn't end uh, after they've left the house. The the parents are to uh, be to their children uh, a a source of wisdom, a source to go back to and uh, and still learn things from, to to gain knowledge from them. And so uh, let's just look at at some ways that parents relate to their children, uh, starting with fathers and then to mothers. First, we see in the scripture that fathers model uh, manhood to their sons. The way that a father relates to his son is he models what it means to be a man to them. Look in Proverbs 4 and verse 1. Proverbs 4, 1.
The scripture says, Hear ye children the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. So the, the, uh, the author of the Proverbs, probably Solomon here, uh, is, is saying uh, that uh, the ch- he's teaching his children, and he's saying, listen to me, uh, hear the wisdom that I'm imparting, because I was also a son. I was uh, the daughter, or the, the son of my mother. I, uh, I heard what they said, and uh, specifically, I heard the teaching of my father. And he says in verse 5, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline uh, from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Uh, uh, This is uh, something that we've somewhat forgotten in our modern world here. Many families uh, don't uh, recognize this or or realize it. But for sons, uh, the the primary experiential mechanism for them to take in wisdom is by watching their father. Of course, they, they are to be taught to go to the scripture, to even compare what their, their fathers do from the scripture. But as far as, as the family goes, as far as, as gaining wisdom and, and savviness uh, from other people, uh, the father is supposed to be the primary source of all that. Uh, the son is to go to the father, to watch him, to listen to his teaching, and gain uh, all of that, the, that common wisdom of men from the father. Uh, this is the way that God has ordained it to be. Uh, the father should go to the scripture, the father should study it, should learn wisdom from uh, his parents before him, and then impart that wisdom to his sons. Uh, fathers are to model manhood in this way. Uh, and so masculinity uh, is something that, that's supposed to be passed down. It's supposed to come from the father to the son to the grandson to down through the generations. And so that's the, the role that men play uh, primarily in, in child rearing, in, in giving wisdom and teaching the children. The ways that Uh, mothers then relate to their daughters uh, is that they are again to model uh, womanhood to their daughters uh, proper femininity they're supposed to show to them Uh, look in Titus 2 verse 3 with me Titus 2 verse 3 The scripture says, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. He says to the aged women that they should uh, model good character, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Uh, he, he says that the, the women, the mothers, uh, ought to uh, model in themselves what, a, uh, what is the design of God for women. Just as men impart masculine wisdom to their sons and, and the, the way of being a man to their sons, women model and teach their daughters how to do the same thing. They should be the template that their daughters uh, will follow after. They should, they should present themselves in wisdom uh, to do these things. Uh, 
And, and just as a, a quick aside, we uh, all realize that this is, is not much done in our day to day. Uh, most of these, these two tasks that we've seen so far of men towards their sons and women towards their daughters has been outsourced. Uh, it's been put out to the culture. Uh, young men oftentimes have to go and find uh, masculine role models in order to learn these things. And, and most of the time, they don't even find good role models. Uh, they just find some, uh, some man that, that has... Uh, just the shadow of masculinity that they, they think that they've latched on to and they go after that. And the same with women. Uh, this, the, the young women, they go after and they find uh, feminine role models or the femininity that the world puts forward. Uh, and they latch on to that and they learn that kind of corrupt uh, worldly wisdom in, in, in femininity. Uh, this is why it's so important for parents to, to serve these roles, to, to be proactive about it, uh, to put themselves forth to their children as these models of masculinity and femininity. And so next, let's look at how fathers relate to their daughters and how uh, mothers relate to their sons. Uh, look in Genesis 29 and verse 18. Fathers are to teach daughters about submission to masculine authority. Uh, we saw last week the, the way that, uh, that womanhood is supposed to be expressed in the household is primarily by submitting to the headship of her husband. Uh, Genesis 29 and verse 18. This is not the, the perfect example of this being done, but it, it nonetheless illustrates the point. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. Uh, this is, of course, the, the common uh, way that, that, that daughters were given in marriage in uh, days past, that the, uh, the father would give away his daughter in marriage uh, to, uh, to her husband, to her betrothed. Uh, and this is, uh, of course, just how masculine authority works w with regard to daughters. Uh, when a, a woman is married uh, and given in marriage, uh, the, it's, it's not as though the, the, the woman is getting out from under all authority when she leaves the household. It's simply a transfer of authority from the father to the husband. Uh, and for uh, and, and so uh, for a uh, a young girl for a daughter uh, her husband is the stand-in for the authority of what her husband will be someday uh, he is to teach her submission uh, and how she ought to submit in authority she she's to practice in obedience to her father of course, this all uh, assuming that her father is godly and is asking godly things of her, that, that her, her father is, uh, is wise, uh, she is to uh, obey him in all things. Uh, but this is, this is how daughters relate to their fathers, that their fathers uh, have authority over them, uh, not tyrannical authority, not uh, abusive authority, but simple authority that they are to submit to as children, as a daughter. And this is again in practice for being handed over to the husband uh, so that she can receive the headship of her husband, uh, allowing him to, to, to represent the family in the world like we talked about last week. Next, mothers... Uh, are to relate to their sons and teach them about gentleness towards their future wives, uh, to gentleness towards the, the the weakness of 
the woman. A turn to John 19 and verse 26. A much better example of this than what we saw for uh, the uh, father towards the daughter. Uh, John 19 verse 26. The scripture says, When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. Uh, Jesus, of course, acting as the perfect son uh, towards his mother, uh, he recognized the the weakness of of his mother he he wasn't uh rude towards her he wasn't abusive towards her uh, he didn't even think of himself as he was dying on the cross he thought about his mother and what would happen to her in her old age when he had left this earth and so uh, he uh, makes provision for her uh, he was gentle and kind and meek towards her uh, this is how uh, women uh, relate to their sons uh, is that they being in weakness uh, being uh, you know the weaker vessel in compared to her son uh, the son is to treat her with respect with uh, with all dignity uh, and not to to use his um, his strength or, or or whatever to in an abusive in tyrannical way. Uh, she is there to teach him uh, by practice how to uh, treat women. And, and this is just something that we all uh, sort of recognize, um, you know, by nature that this is how, how it happens. Uh, men are, are, are far more uh, tender towards their mothers uh, than they are towards, uh, you know, other men. Uh, and this is to teach them how they should treat their future wives, uh, to be kind towards them. And so this is, this is why it's important uh, that there be both a man and a woman in the family, a father and a mother, uh, to teach men uh, how to be men and how to uh, be kind towards women, uh, and uh, so that the, uh, the daughters... Uh, will know how to to submit in a in a loving way to their future husbands, uh, and uh, so that they can be taught how to keep uh, how to keep the home, how how to to care for uh, children, uh, how to 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 well to be good wives. Uh, the the children are to learn about marriage from the first marriage that they know in their lives, and that is the marriage of their parents. And so this is why uh, we need uh, whole families uh, in society. We need both, uh, both of the parents to be uh, immediately in the children's lives, uh, not just uh, you know, one weekend with the father, uh, the rest of the week with uh, the mother. Uh, we need them to be whole families working together as God had designed for it. And this is how children are to be raised, how this wisdom of, of, of the gender roles that God has made for us is to be imparted to the next generation. And so now that we've looked at that, uh, let's begin briefly to look at some sins against these roles that God has ordained for us. Uh, and let's begin by looking at sins which men commit oftentimes. And the first sin is a failure to lead in the household. Uh, Proverbs 24 and verse 3 with me. A failure to lead in the household. The scripture says in chapter 24, verse 3, Through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of understanding increaseth strength. 
For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. So a, a, a wise man increases in strength. He, he goes out and he, uh, uh, he uh, again, he, he leads his home. He, he furthers it by his strength. And in contrast, in verse 7, wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. That is before the, the elders. Uh, the fool does not go to, uh, to lead the family. He does not go to the elders of the city. He does not speak to them because he is not wise. Uh, a wise man strengthens himself. He goes out to war. He speaks with those at the city gate, uh, and he leads his home in doing it. Um, he, he goes out and represents his home. For married men, this partly means also entrusting uh, what you have to your wives, your substance. Uh, in Proverbs 31 and verse 10, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. Uh, part of, of leading the home is, is of course, leaving the things of the house to the wife, uh, giving her the things that she needs for the home, entrusting it to her, and then going out and, uh, and, and without the house, go in and collect things for the house. It's also in taking authority over, of course, as we see here, in, trust, in, in entrusting things to the woman, uh, taking authority over her in that, and in taking authority over the children. In 1 Timothy 3, verse 4, One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. And in Proverbs 23, and verse 13, Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou bear, uh, beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Uh, taking authority, uh, subjugating his children, of course, in love, uh, not, again, uh, as a tyrant, not doing this unto wrath, but uh, for their own good, to, to take charge of the children. To ignore this duty in the household is the sin of slothfulness in the household. Proverbs 24 and verse 30. The scripture says, I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Uh, to, to not lead the family to not uh, go out and and actively do things for the family to be so slothful is to bring ruin onto the household he says just a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the hands to sleep and so shall thy poverty come uh, the, to to not lead the house is uh, for the man is to bring ruin onto it it also often leads to interpersonal strife uh, within the household and without. Proverbs 10 verse 26 says, As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. In Proverbs 13 verse 4, The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Uh, he, he desires, and yet he has nothing. He is always frustrated with himself. He is always self-loathing. And to others, he is like smoke to the eyes or vinegar to rotten teeth. Uh, he is uh, 
always considered good for nothing and a uh, always uh, an irritant to everyone around him. There's another sin for uh, masculine uh, for for masculine uh, that is the sin of not just uh, refusing to lead. The other sin is to refuse to be meek. It's to be tyrannical in the household. Uh, here I'm using meekness to mean that we recognize and compensate for the weakness of others. Uh, it, we are not overpowering and we are not uh, 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 hurting them by our strength. We uh, are to love them uh, and in loving them to uh, provide for them. Uh, they are to have care towards them. In 1 Peter 3, 7, we read, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Uh, he, he says to, to, to be meek towards them as the weaker vessel, give honor to them, knowing that we are heirs together of life, knowing that, that, that you, you are in the same boat together, uh, not trampling over the weaker vessel, uh, but lifting it up. Uh, in Ephesians 6 verse 4, Ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Uh, many fathers uh, in their uh, zealousness to discipline or, or their uh, anger uh, towards their circumstance will bring their children up in wrath. Uh, they, they will not, they will neglect completely to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord uh, according to his standards, uh, knowing that, that children are lent out to the parents of the Lord. Uh, also, uh, to be meek means to provide for them. Uh, in 1 Timothy 5, verse 8, But if any man provide not for his own, and especially for those of his house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. Uh, to, to recognize, the again, the, the weakness of the wife, the weakness of the children, their need for provision, uh, and to compensate for that, to, to, to use your, um, your, your uh, strength and your uh, abilities to care for them. This also extends uh, for the man uh, to parents in old age uh, and, and in caring for them. Uh, Mark 7 and verse 9, if you will. Mark 7 and verse 9. We read earlier not to forget our mothers in our old age. Mark 7 verse 9 says, this is Jesus, He said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is korban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, that ye have delivered, uh, and many like things do ye. Uh, the Corban rule was that if, if the your father or your mother uh, in their old age, began to be in need. They needed someone to take care of them. Uh, and they asked after uh, a portion with their children. They, they asked for their children to, to support them in whatever way. Then the Corban rule was that a, the child could simply say that it was a gift 
dedicated to the temple, a gift dedicated to the Lord. Uh, it, it, it was going to be taken and, and given to his service, whether it be uh, animals, whether it be money, uh, whatever. Uh, he just had to swear that it was, it was going to the Lord's care. And then so long as he said that, it didn't matter whether he actually took it to the temple or not. It was no longer uh, he, tied up in Kate, taking care of his parents. He could just shirk all responsibility toward them uh, and, and say that he was dedicating it to the temple. And Jesus says that this is uh, against the commandments of God. In fact, that this was a, an offense worthy of the death penalty because he wasn't caring for his parents in their old age. Uh, he was not giving them the care that they needed. Otherwise, of course, their age would, would take hold of them and they would die. Uh, this uh, failure to be meek, to, to recognize the needs of the household, to, to come down to their weakness is uh, another way, even today, uh, that we see men have failed. And not only in uh, positively uh, going out and acquiring things for the family, leading the family, but also in coming back and providing for them and, and, and helping them in meekness. And all of this also is uh, tied up in the sin of being what the, the Bible calls a striker, uh, someone who is violent and brings violence into their household. Look in Malachi 2 and verse 13. Malachi 2 verse 13. And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying out, insomuch that he regardeth not the offering any more, and receiveth it with good and receiveth it good will and receiveth it with good will at your hand. Yet ye say, Wherefore? That is, why is God neglecting our offering? Why is he not receiving it? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet as she is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant, and did not he make one, yet had he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. Uh, to refuse to be meek, to, to refuse to, to come down to the weakness of uh, the wife, of the children, uh, is to have violence, is to bring violence onto them. Uh, it's again to be a tyrant in the house. Uh, it is not to be uh, in line of, with the good godly character that he has ordained for men. And the final, and we'll just mention this quickly, the final sin, of course, against masculinity is to reject masculinity altogether. Uh, as men, God has made us for masculinity. He has, he has given us all that we need for it. Uh, and to reject it by going into perversion, by going into uh, an effeminate uh, lifestyle is uh, not acceptable. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, to, to reject the masculinity that God has ordained for us is just to turn away from his 
design, is, is to turn away from his goodness. Uh, and that's why the, the uh, sin of homosexuality, the sin uh, which we know today as transgenderism, the, 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 uh, the so-called LGBT phenomenon uh, is so against the design of God and is such a high sin uh, that Romans 1 speaks of it as completely turning away from God's grace and so being turned over to, uh, to sinful desires in return. And so we see there tonight uh, that uh, these sins against masculinity uh, and what their effects might be, would be. And uh, with that, we'll go on ahead since we have some time to look at uh, some sins against uh, womanhood, against femininity. And the first one, as you might suspect, is a failure to follow in the household, a failure to be in obedience to your husbands. Ephesians 5 verse 22 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Uh, he says to, to submit to your husbands, to be under their authority. Uh, and he says, as unto the Lord, just as uh, the church is subject to Christ uh, as his body, uh, that wives should be in subjection to their husbands. Uh, it's not uh, a... Uh, it's not a good excuse uh, to, to say that, well, the husband is not just like Christ. Uh, the husband it does not live up to the standard of Christ in every way. Uh, because the point is not that. The point is to, to show the disposition of the church towards Christ, uh, to image that. Uh, even if the husband is imperfect, even if the husband is, uh, is not Christ, uh, then uh, it, it still is in keeping with the biblical image and the biblical role in submitting to his authority. Uh, that is, of course, in things that uh, can be done uh, in line with the conscience, in line with the Lord's law. The woman is also to follow the husband in nurturing, in nurturing the household. Proverbs 31 and verse 11 Proverbs 31, verse 11. The scripture says, The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. He shall, uh, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth forth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. Uh, as the, the husband entrusts things to the woman, gives her uh, the tasks of the home to keep, she is diligent to keep those tasks, taking the things that the husband brings to her and other things that she can find also and using them for the house, uh, being like a merchant ship, bringing it in and dispersing it to the needs of the house. The sin against this is the sin of being a busybody uh, and also the sin which, in, which leads to uh, sexual immorality to fornications and adulteries uh, in first Timothy 5 verse 11 first Timothy 5 verse 11 The scripture says, But the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And withal, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, 
but tattlers also and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Uh, the uh, widows in this case, uh, they have uh, gotten out from under the uh, authority of their uh, first husband. And when they have uh, waxed wanton against Christ, that is, they, they seek to leave out from his authority over them. Uh, then it says that they wander from house to house. They are busybodies. They are tattlers. Uh, they are idle in all things. Uh, they uh, are, are not in submission to uh, any authority over them. And so they go off into these sins. In verse 14 then, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. And in this, of course, uh, this is just the design that we've been talking about all this time. A second Timothy three, six also tells us how in, uh, in not being subject to uh, either their husband or to their father or to the law of God, uh, that they will be led astray into all kinds of other sins. Also, second Timothy three, six says, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. For these uh, silly women who are laden with sins and led away with their lusts, uh, they are, are led away into sin and uh, they have their uh, damnation on them because of this all because they have not properly submitted in the household in the way that God has uh, ordained for them but there is also another sin um, which women can uh, engage in not just in not submitting to the man but also in not reproving the man in the household when the man sins, when the man is, is not fulfilling his role as God has given him, it is a biblical uh, office of the woman in the house to nag him. Uh, the, the, the scripture uh, says that this is a good thing uh, and you know, not overly so and not in a way that is unloving uh, or uncharitable towards him. But he, but but she is to uh, is to to reprove him and to to make sure that he's doing his role to to push him on and give him a reason for uh, doing uh, the things that he's supposed to do. I look in Proverbs thirty one and verse twenty six. Proverbs thirty one verse twenty six. Not doing this in a, a way that usurps his authority. Not doing this. Again, in a, in a, a mean-spirited way, but uh, doing it in a proper way uh, that is, is supposed to be done. Proverbs 31, 26. The scripture says, She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Uh, she is not silent in the household. Uh, she doesn't uh, just stand back and let whatever uh, happens in the household happens. If she sees that there's a problem in the household, if she sees that, that the, the, the man needs to do something, she should bring this up to him. Uh, she should have the uh, law of kindness in her mouth and the, uh, have her mouth opened in wisdom uh, in order to, uh, to tell her husband, to inform him about things that need to be done. Ecclesiastes 7.5 also says, It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. Uh, if, if there is a, an occasion for rebuke even in the house, it is not wrong for a, a woman in the spirit of submission, in the spirit of love towards him, to bring that wisdom to him, uh, to let him know that, uh, that he needs to, to do something, he needs to uh, fix an issue. Uh, and of course, a, a godly man, a wise man, will hear this rebuke. 
Uh, he, he will uh, compare it to the scripture, to godly principles, and he'll do it. Uh, one, uh, I, I suppose really the best example in scripture that we have of this is, of course, uh, the Queen Esther, uh, that she brought before the king uh, the, the problem that, uh, of Haman coming against her people, against the Jews. Uh, she meekly came to him. She came in the, the spirit of submission. She came uh, knowing that, that she was not uh, the king, that she, she could usurp no authority over him. And yet she did bring this to him. He, she did bring this reproof to him, uh, letting him know that what he had done in allowing Haman to draw up this plan and put the king's seal on it uh, was not good. And that action needed to be taken. Again, not to usurp authority, but uh, in order for the house to work properly, uh, to, to, to bring these issues to the husband. And a failure to do this, a failure to, uh, to reprove of sin, and in fact to allow sin in the household, or even worse, to further sin in the household, uh, is, is, of course, a grave sin for a woman. In 1 Kings 11, verse 1, King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Amorites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after other after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love, and he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. So we see the, the, the strong influence that, that women have over their husbands, uh, that, that they can either turn their heart away from the ways of the Lord, as Solomon's wives did, or they can turn it more in line with the Lord, uh, calling them back to faithfulness to their family. Uh, women ought to, to bring these things to their husbands, uh, if there's a tr if there's a problem, uh, to let them know about it, and of course men ought to receive that. They ought to hear it and check whether it is uh, in line. Search out where the problem is with their wives, and uh, then to to do something about it to correct it. And of course, finally, just as with men and rejecting wholesale masculinity, uh, another sin for women is that they will completely reject their femininity. Uh, Romans 1.26 says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Uh, to refuse to serve these roles, uh, to, to uh, do the, the wonderful work of being uh, a woman in the household, uh, in, and uh, refusing to even be a woman, to be transgender or to, to try to fill the role of a man, uh, it says is against nature, against God's design. And so uh, with that, uh, we've seen two uh, the sins that women can have against their womanhood. And uh, next week we'll begin and we'll, we'll continue to look a little bit more and uh, We'll move on to something else uh, after that. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you, and Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for uh, the roles that you've given us in your plan. And Lord, we pray that you'd give us strength to fulfill those roles and opportunities to do the same. Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, you'd forgive us, that you'd cleanse us from your sin, that you'd make us able to do uh, the work of evangelism in the days ahead. And we pray that you would uh, place people in our way that uh, you would have to come to faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that you'd be with our missionaries and for those that couldn't be here with us tonight and give them comfort and strength in the days ahead. 
It's in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.